what you're going to hear may <clears throat> not be very good to hear if you're an animal lover. Um, Ivor Skill, it borders on crazy. It probably almost is crazy. Uh, my brother-in-law thinks it's hilarious. Um, but, you know, it's a skill all the same that I'm going to explain how I do. Um, I think I've mentioned it in another video, but if not, I'm going to mention it now. I can catch rabbits on foot. Yes. I'm serious. I can get a rabbit, I can chase it down and catch it with my bare hands. No guns, no traps, no boat. I can literally run them down with my bare hands. And I'm going to explain how to do that. Now you're all sitting there going, whoa, hang on a minute. That's, I've got to take that in. Well, just take it in. It's, it is crazy, yes. Okay, so how do I do it? Well, first up, <coughs> there's one little thing I admit. Uh, you ain't really going to get full-size rabbits. Not very often. It's the babies. Um, not the real little tiddler ones, but the half-size grown ones. That their legs are too short. Basically, they can't run fast enough. Um, it's pretty hard to get full ground ones um, but you know you may get one but most likely you're going to get little ones now what seems to happen that I noticed around here we've got rabbits here and they are native they're being bought from England um, and I even know the person whose relatives let them out and there's been plenty of farmers cursing that name for many years um, <coughs> They bought them over here uh, as sport. They bought foxes as well. And they were released not very far from me, and now they're just a national <laughs> pest of chronic proportions. Anyway, um, <coughs> what seems to happen with these little feral English rabbits we've got here, um, when they're small... When they're real small, of course, they're still down the burrow. When they're sort of medium-sized, they start to come out and eat in the grass, uh, eat the grass, sort of, but they don't really venture a real long distance um, from their burrows initially. Uh, and what you might see, you might see one baby and you think, oh, there's a baby. And then you'll see a second one, and then you might see a third one. Now, what that means is then their burrow is pretty close by. Um, now later on that night or whatever when they're all back in the burrow you might want to go and have a little snoo uh, snoop where the burrow is and it makes it good to have a lot of old crap laying around or water tanks or other bits and pieces um, <clears throat> around the place because they act as obstacles now I'm not meaning cars I'm meaning things that actually go to the ground as in sheds, water tanks big lumps of stuff that, you know, uh, whether you, you've got your know, chicken wire fencing is very good, especially if it's like the side of a chook pen or something like that. Um, and what will basically happen is, if you can work out a direction that you, you see them outside, but you've got to go right around and come up in a direction um, whereby you basically get a chance to get them cornered in a lot of stuff. And you then physically chase them around. Now, you've got to have... You can't be fuzzy in the head from too much booze the night before, marijuana, anything like that. You've got to be as absolutely clear as clear. You've got to have very, very honed concentration when you do this. And you've got to just keep your mind on the ball. Absolutely keep your mind on the ball. you also got to be one of these people who doesn't trip over things easily. Um, you may have seen this in military training... Uh, whereby they have all these tyres and stuff lined up on the ground, and then you've got to run through all the tyres without tripping over any of these tyres, or whatever, you've got to run through all the middle of them all. Um, that's to, you know, train you to be really good on your feet. Not just as good as you are normally, but very, very good on your feet. Some of that sort of training um, will help you. If you've been in the military and you've been through 
um, that sort of boot camp training where you can run through a whole bunch of tyres laying on the ground, a whole field of rocks and not trip over ever, that's good for this sort of stuff. Um, but you've got to keep very honed um, senses, like very honed concentration um, and run this thing into a corner or into a place where it's hard for them to sort of get out. I haven't really had many things but it, it so seems that there's another thing they do which is the last fatal flaw most often and that's they back up on themselves and they'll go running into a place and then they'll go hell I can't go here because this area is blocked off and then they go dart around and because your sort of um, because your steps are so much bigger when they run into a place and then go around in a circle they go around in a loop and then come back around again they lose ground and they lose time doing that, um, realizing that they can't, and they dodge back out. Um, so you may have a really easy chance to literally run them into a corner and get them that way. You may also be chasing them around and around amongst a whole heap of stuff, which has often happened to me, um, and they basically double back on themselves. And because I'm behind them, and then they sort of go, you know, up. Uh, I'm here, and they sort of go up and then go, hell, I'm not going to make it, and then go around to that way, hell, I'm not going to make it, and, and then because they go in such a big loop, they lose ground, um, and then I gain ground on them and grab them. Another one I was chasing, <coughs> and he started running out into the open paddock, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I've, I've probably lost it here. I don't think I'm going to get it. But I thought, no, keep on, and I kept flat macker on this thing, you know, and I ran like hell for, it was, about 250 yards, I was going like the wind, and I was right behind this thing, and he, he knew it. You know, he was he was worried. And you know what he done? He kept running straight, running straight. You know what the, the stupid thing done? He come to what we call a dam, or you guys call a pond, where the sheep drink, quite a big one. And he come running up into that, and he come up to a whole side of it, and he's only a small rabbit, and he thought, what the hell am I going to do? So he started trying to run into the water. Well, he sort of slowed down, couldn't swim quite well, and then I'd just come up straight behind him and grabbed him as he'd gone into the water about two foot, and I just grabbed hold of him, and that was it. I had him. Um, and... Oh, another stupid one they love to do. This is this one. I got another one like this. Well, a uh, very good one time. <laughs> he ran into a pipe, didn't he, and thought he was safe in there. So what did I do? I got a lump of something and blocked it against one end. The other end, I grabbed hold of an old bit of chicken wire and jammed it in one end. And then the other end that I blocked with a lump of wood or whatever, I lifted that one up. And I put the hose in. <laughs> I drowned the little sod in there. Um, and, yeah, and then just tipped it out and I had me rabbit. Um, these are sort of unorthodox sort of cruel ways, um, the, they do sometimes start squealing because they basically realise that the game's up and you're, you know, they're seconds off being caught. Um, these are not rabbits that you get a real feed out of. Um, but let's put it like this. These open slather on rabbits here. There is no restrictions of them. They, the government deliberately funds poisoning of them um, you're encouraged to get rid of as many as you can. Um, I have been told by a hunter, I don't know how true it is, that in England, the winter, the cold winter, tends to kill off a lot of them, and that's what stops the numbers getting out of control there. Having said that, it doesn't get cold enough here, they get out of control anyways, and nothing stops them. Um, and, you know, we, we've introduced a number of diseases, um, some which have got resistance to myxomatosis is still mutating and gets a couple but not many. Um, if you're going to eat them, check the liver and if there's white spots on the liver, don't touch it. If there's any sort of growth, if there's any sort of mange or malformed milk and crap, don't touch them. If there's something that looks wrong with them, don't touch them. Most of the babies are fine though um, and so many of these diseases all bar myxomatosis, which keeps mutating, um, they've built resistance to it, Klesi virus and all this. They've got resistance to them there. Um, 
And, you know, but also if you see some strange looking warts, growth, funny thing going with the hair, with the skin, white spots on the lid, just don't touch it. Um, don't even feed it to your dog. Um, yeah. So basically, if you can work out a way of running them into a place, you're right. Another stunt is to have an area, particularly somewhere where you throw a little bit of grain or a few little bits of character, a few greens or whatever, um, and you might upset your chooks doing this, but you can sort of do it even with uh, an old chook pen or an existing one, but it's probably not a very good idea because you might upset your chooks a bit. Um, unless you can get them down one end and then wrap it up another end. Um, but have a place that's very heavily fenced off that Rabsies can get into the entrance and then you walk in and close the door and he's stuck in there. That's another way to catch Rabsies. Um, the other way is um, <clears throat> with a burrow there often be not just one burrow, sometimes there is just one burrow and other times there's like multiple holes that all lead in together. You go blocking them all off. And then you have a hunting dog or a number of people or something. I don't know if it's going to be another bit of mesh or what. And you go and pour water in the burrow. I mean, you get like you get the water pump onto this thing and you start filling her up. And you flood them out and they come shooting out and you can get them that way. It's very good if you've got a hunting dog because um, especially once it's happened a couple of times or if you've got a lot of rabbits and you do it, you know, and you train the dog in it, um, these rabbits come flying out and then the dog will just get them for you sort of thing. Um, other times, you know, you might see them coming and you, you've got literally half a second to grab the bucket. Um, you may want to use basically some sort of old fishing net and put that over the entrance and they'll go flying out, um, you know, actually have it covered around and, and nailed in with tent pegs over the entrance. And then they go flying out into this, um, you know, tent thing. Um, don't just always assume oh, I'll leave them there and then I'll get them later. Sometimes when you go to take the tent pegs out and get this thing, they go stupid on you. And they'll go friggin' ape shit to scratch you and they'll get out. It's not a terribly dumb idea. As soon as you get one in that, to put a knife in or a poker or a gun and, and kill them while they're still in there. Kill them as soon as possible um, and butcher them later because then at least you know you've got them because if they're alive, there's quite a chance when you're trying to handle them later, they'll scratch those bejesus out of you and they'll get away. Um, and I've had some bad scratches um, from a pet rabbit of my sister's. Um, but uh, we weren't even doing anything to that one. It was just a psychotic bastard of an animal. Um, but yeah. So that, that's some strange uh, and crazy ways that you can catch rabbits, um, you know, sort of uh, by hand um, and on foot. Hmm.